To get her course up and running, Thelma has gone through a lengthy recruitment process. This is like an opportunity of a lifetime you get near. Culminating in an interview day where she selected her 10 traveller trainees. How old are you, Vicky? 17. For 16 and 16. I've tried my best to get a job. Have you? Mm. And you reckon being a traveller is what's put you on? Yeah, Wrexham is very, very prejudiced. Smile. I don't care if you can read, you can write, you can sew. All I want from you is your commitment. To be honest, I don't really know what commitment is. A new factory has been leased, giving Thelma the chance to expand the business. And at the same time, how's her 10 raw recruits? If this doesn't work, then I'm penniless, basically. Now, over the next six months, the mixture of Irish travellers, English travellers, and Romani gypsies will be taught the skills needed to make Thelma's famous dresses, with the most capable girls being taken on at the end. The months of preparation and planning are over. The real work starts today. Come on, baby girl, let's go. Oh, look what I've got for you, babes, look. I know. I'll wear a lucky necklace, what you made me. Oh, thanks so much. What's this going to do for me? If you look. Bring me luck, so I'm going to have a lucky day. Yeah. Am I? Thelma's project is a unique undertaking, but having worked with gypsies and travellers for years, she's well aware of the challenges ahead. This is a really big day. The adrenaline's going. I can't imagine it in my head yet, them all walking in, or if anyone's going to walk in, or, you know, what's going to happen. I really don't know. Some of the girls might be naughty and some of them might be good. And... If they're naughty, I think she's going to put them in the naughty corner. Oh, at least it's not icy today. I just want to start it. I, I, you know, I've done all the faffing around now and trying to get everything there on time, and that, to me, is the boring bit. This is the bit that I've been aiming for, is for this day when they're going to start. They're going to walk in, and that's it. Oh, would you like the necklace? That necklace is going to help me so much today, you don't know. Watch the road on the side, please. Thelma's project will give a rare opportunity to gypsy girls who might otherwise be destined for a life of cooking and cleaning. Ah. Seventeen-year-old Irish traveller Margaret lives just a mile away from the new factory, on a small traveller site in the heart of industrial Liverpool. Feeling very nervous. I've got butterflies in my stomach and just all shaky. Like many of the new trainees, today will be the first time she's ever entered a professional workplace. Why have you chosen your outfit today? Well, look respectable looking and like we have more like for. Worky looking, look on me. What is it you're kind of dreading about today? Um, I guess I won't be able to do the things Fanny and the girls ask me. The most I'm nervous about. Thelma and her traveller trainees aren't the only ones with reason to be anxious today. Hi, love. For her highly skilled team of seamstresses, working life might never be the same again. There's a bit of a weird atmosphere, like, I think everyone's a bit... ...don't know what to expect, so just have to wait and see when they arrive. It's a, a bit in limbo. Everyone's in limbo. Having worked with the community for 15 years, Thelma is well used to travellers missing appointments. 10 o'clock, uh, nearly, 5 2, and we haven't got anyone here yet. Yes, we have. <laughs> Here's my star pupil. Hi, yeah. Uh, you're all right? How are you? Good girl. And with all but one of the trainees arriving late, it's clear that instilling a sense of discipline in the girls will be a major challenge. I thought uh, there would have been more of them here but, than by now, but you know, we don't know what the situation is yet, do we? This is the first day. They don't know the rules, but we'll give them the rules when they come. We'll hang on like another. Half an hour or something, see who turns up. Most of the girls do eventually arrive for their first day at work. How many have we got now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Because they've all got a kind of red ball each. What's going on? Oh, God, it's hilarious. Look at the leg warmers and the high heels. 
Yeah. How are you doing, Victoria? I'm doing all right, Jeff. Yeah. 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 Little better. By quarter past ten, one trainee is still missing. Come on, girls. But for Thelma and her other nine recruits, it's finally time to get down to work. We want you to realise what a big opportunity this is, right? For the simple reason, most people who train to do something has to, have to pay, right? You have to pay to be trained. You're not only not paying to be trained, you're going to get paid. But we've got a few rules to follow, right? And them rules have got to be adhered to. And if you break them, that's your first strike, OK? Next time you get a written warning, and for the third one, you're gone. OK? So you've got to abide by the rules. Everybody, right, can I just... I'm going to tell you, everybody said this is going to fail, right? What I want to do is prove all them wrong, OK? I just want this to work. The girls will eventually be expected to learn all aspects of dressmaking. I'd love to try on just for the weight size, would you? Yeah. <laughs> but their challenge on the first day is to get acquainted with a sewing machine. Right, this is what you call a flat machine, right? And it's a straight stitching machine. A task Margaret finds particularly frustrating. You don't need to push the fabric, the machine will take it with it, so just so slowly, just... yeah, slowly. Just go, Margaret. Do you know that? Just tap it. <laughs> Will you shut up? Stop. I keep forgetting to stop my foot. While next door, Thelma tries to guide the girls through the basics of employment law. So it's 30 hours a week, as you know. Yep. It's from 10 till 4 and you get £182.40, okay. Pence, OK? Do we get that into our bank? Into your hand. Into yeah. Hand. Yeah. So, well, it's not cash and hand. Cash and hand's a different thing. Oh, cash sorry. and hand means, you know... Anyway, you get £110.40. Now, you shouldn't have any deductions out of that. What's that? Tax insurance. Is that, that's fun to you. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what tax you don't know what tax insurance is. You won't have no tax insurance taken out of that. Right, do you know what that is? You know what's happening? No. Um, the government take so much money off each individual to pay for schools, hospitals, yeah. things like that. That's your tax. When one of the kids says something like that, it's quite a shock. I think, I know, I'd say most everything about travellers, but you think, my God, the, you know, she really doesn't know what tax and insurance is. Throughout the morning, Thelma's staff attempt to pass their knowledge on to their new colleagues. Spin the wheel a bit. They get distracted very fast. I try to explain her how to make the simple stitch, but her head was in a different direction, which is just... I am keep waiting for her to pay attention to this, what I want her to do. Thelma had hoped that the new recruits would quickly gel with her current team. But by lunchtime, a clear divide between the travellers and the more established staff is already emerging. I couldn't be bothered sitting there gabbing with them all when I was having my dinner. I just wanted to have something to eat, and then that's that. They're all on hype, aren't they? But in escaping the travellers, they have broken one of Thelma's rules. No drinking or eating. Yeah, but I'm not being for the first said... rule. The first rule was no eating, eating and drinking in the but factory. We're not starving. What do you want us to do? Go in there. No, we couldn't up, but we're standing up. That's not the point. The whole point is no eating and drinking in here. And I've just told you, Chelsea, you walk right past me. Whatever. My hands out of order, flouting the rules like that. Go out for your lunch then, if you're that put up about it. You know, go and do what you want to do, but you're not doing that. One of the trainees, Veronica, still hasn't turned up, and it takes a phone call from Thelma to discover that she has no intention of doing so. Is there any reason why you can't do it? Oh, you're leaving, are you? You know, at the end of the day, you're all travellers and you're going to travel, aren't you? That's it. You're going to get off. This is day one. We've lost one already, right? <laughs> one a day. Can't afford to lose one a week. You know, it's not like we've got thousands in the background waiting to take, take the places, is it? <sighs> the ten trainees are down to nine, but for the remaining new recruits, the first day at work is nearly over. I'm tired. 
I've been working all day, working for <laughs> You don't realise how much work actually goes into making a dress until you come somewhere like this. We'd like to make a pair of decks, like show people that we can do it and she was right for like Levin is doing all of there. And she's not stupid for doing it. She's like doing the right thing for travelling girls. But, yeah. I uh, would want I would want a back answer Velmer. No way. Ooh, she's yeah. a chicken chicken chicken. <laughs> Angel, come in here and get her. Wash for now. Seventeen year old Irish traveller Victoria lives half an hour away from the factory. In a house near Queensbury. Scala, what's the floor for me? Good girl. Good girl. Like most of the trainees, she now has to juggle her new job with the day to day domestic duties of a teenage traveller girl. Get up in the morning, get the children ready for school, feed them, bring them over to the school, come back, wash the small one, feed her, and clean up. Then the next day is the same thing get up and clean up again, making dresses. It's a nice thing to do, it? do something with your life. So just sitting there doing that and just cleaning all the time. Having grown up nearby in a trailer, Victoria's family moved into a house six years ago, but she still pines for the more traditional traveller lifestyle. When I get married, I can live in a car. I wouldn't live in a house. I'd live in a caravan. The caravan side, she wouldn't get bored because there's some loads of girls that you can just run up and chat to. Look at me then, I put lipstick on. Oh my God, she's handsome. Give me kisses now. Oh, her book and love layer is. Yes. Ooh. I'm very close to youngest, like these two now. My little niece and little sister. She loves another bite. Because her little bitch, aren't you? For the next few days, the girls try to get to grips with the sewing machines. No! Right. No! And the demands of working life. The best part of the day is going home. Thelma's long and varied list of rules covers a ban on mobile phones in the factory. It's me, Rose, and Hollis, and we're really back in a minute because I'm here with the people, yeah? Sorry about that. Um. And with a workforce that speaks over six different languages, including the traveller dialect, Kant. You always meant for the same as the thing. Yeah. Thelma is also insistent that everybody communicates in English. Nobody else is allowed to speak because we've, we've got Chinese, we've got Polish and we've got Swazavalians. So, for fairness, she said, none of us speak in our own language because it's not fair in the other ones. It's a bit ignorant, if you'd like to call it. Yeah, now I need to cut another one and it's wasting my time. That's getting need to be done by today. But even with these guidelines, the strain of sharing a workplace with the travellers is beginning to show. That was part of waistband and it's wasted. Oh, I thought that was very uh, material because it's lying around anyway. That's why. This is what I keep asking you for. Keep your working place tidy. What? Keep it tidy. Whatever you work, keep it tidy. And none of you is listening. We are listening. And right now, I'm angry. Are you? Then don't push, That's please. Nice. Any pieces like this, don't laugh, please, because I'm angry now. And you see, you even don't pay attention what I'm talking to you. No, sure, I thought that was spare material, though. Next time, ask if you want to take something, OK? Yeah. Oh, my God. God. What? I'm shaking. What? What? I'm shaking because of you. You make me angry. I make you angry. God bless. Yes. She's angry. I make her shake. I make her shake in a minute. Shannon, you need to I wasn't going to talk back. She thought I was going to go, yeah, and thank you. I won't. Can't work like this. If she's going to be stubborn like this, then I'm going to go to Thelma and tell her that I'm not going to work with her. Three days into Thelma's seamstress course, and the gypsy girls are continuing to be initiated into working life. Everyone who doesn't want to, like, die in a fire, come over to here. <laughs> as well as running the course, Thelma is overseeing a business which has grown by more than 400% in the last few years. She wants diamonds with a pinch case. What about your top, though? Probably scattered diamonds. 
And on Wednesday, an order from a non-traveller, Zoe, gives Thelma her first opportunity to train the girls on a real job. Right, hiya, this is Zoe. Hiya, And these Zoe. are all the girls who are going to work on your costume for right, you. Okay. Right, It's Moulin Rouge theme, which is quite burlesque, and I want an outfit. I don't want to be um, too revealing, but I don't want to be... I want to stand out, I really want to be sparkly, really. If anyone knows about sparkle, these it girls is, do. Definitely. These will know about sparkle, how to make things stand out. Yeah. So you go round here, you, you feel a bra there. Go round a bra there. And so the biggest point there, and measure it, OK? All the girls will eventually get to work on wedding dresses and learn how to make Thelma's famous corsets. But for now, their task is to take Zoe's vital statistics. Now, you see where the cheeks of a bum are? There. Oh, you go yeah. under there. <laughs> <laughs> under there. Don't put her down. Don't get one. <laughs> They then set to work trying to visualise their own ideas for her Moulin Rouge themed dress. I think people's first, like thoughts on travellers is they're um, really loud, not really got many manners probably. But to be honest, I've just met them, the other lovely girls, um, loads of enthusiasm. I just think it's amazing what she's doing, giving them the opportunity to like spread their wings and see how, how like everyone else lives, give their input on outfits. Roseanne really enjoyed it, she got the feeler. I saw Rosa and was really Shan, excited Shan, about it. Shan, you did, Shan. He said, oh, look at that body. I have to feel that body. Don't lie, Shan. Throughout the course, Thelma's trainees will all be paid a basic wage, and Friday is payday. Come on, it's a nice moment now. Many of the travellers are the first women in their families to ever earn money. Miss Tui, step forward. <laughs> what are you going to spend it on? Valentine's Day, isn't it? Oh, oh, just spend on someone else. Oh, it was her. Right. There is money in, in that. For really? you. Money. <laughs> no, Margaret. Pound coin disc. <laughs> Bridges. Yeah, we see. What are you going to spend yours on? Saving it up. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, don't be That's boring. Do. Don't spend it. <laughs> spending it on a car when I get the money. The traveller's first week as working women is complete. <laughs> Seventeen year old Bridget lives on a nearby trailer site and is one of the group's English travellers. She finished her GCSEs, gaining several A's, but it was not an experience Bridget enjoyed. I was bullied a lot here because of being a traveller um, from year seven all the way to year 11. I got a lot of verbal abuse, like jippo, pikey, things like that. I actually got told that I lived in a bin. I don't know why, because I don't know where that's come from. I thought we always lived in caravans and chalets, but you know, I live in a bin. It's the second week of the course, and after some trials and tribulations, the girls have all but mastered how to thread the sewing machines. Shit. They are now ready to move on to the second stage of their training. It's a big breakthrough for them today because they're going to measure each other, keep their own measurements, and they're going to make a block pattern for a skirt, which is the easiest one to do. So when they've made this block pattern, they will be able to use that to make any type of skirt they want. They will be taught by specialist corset maker Yan Lee, one of Thelma's most skillful workers. What character is that to be standards? We called her Heather. You could be Peggy Mitchell. <coughs> yeah, Peggy. Get out of my pub! Get out of my pub! <laughs> but it's, get out of my shop! <laughs> but it soon becomes clear that for the gypsy girls, half of whom dropped out of school by the age of 11, even the most basic workplace jobs are challenging. Plus, will they be finished today? Two. Oh, we finished before March. 
16-year-old Margaret is finding the task particularly difficult. It's very hard. I've had to just buy me all skirt. Why would I want to make me all skirt? I don't want to do it. I can't do it. Oh, God, this is so tormenting. You have to be a little bit patient. Patient with that. <laughs> I'm sweating. I'm... Everything go point to you. So, ah, I can't do this. I can't do this. Oh, You're gonna this one. Who's, who don't want to do it? Okay? Well, this is important. No, Felma, not No, no Margaret, I'm talking. Do it. Yeah, that's what she's right. on about. I can't do me. it. It's not my fault. I can't no, do it. Right, listen no. to me. You do that and you'll get a strike. I can't do you that, You do yeah. that and you will get no, your first like... strike. That's like a petulant little child, right? No, you're acting. What did do? You're acting like a five-year-old. What did I do? Just throw it up. I can't do that. It's not my fault, Felma. I can't do it. It's my no, first time. No, no one's saying it's your fault. We're saying you've got to listen. If you can't do it, sit and wait for someone to come and help you. OK? Stop acting like a child. You are acting like a child. That's how kids act. Mm -hmm. With Margaret struggling, Bridget steps in to help. If you did wrong, next time you won't make mistakes. Yeah, exactly. OK, this is your learning oh, from gosh, your I do experience. Really young. It's took us three hours and we're still not even done with the template because people are just taking too much time messing about or can't be bothered doing it. Okay. It was a disaster, complete disaster in there. Bridget is quiet. She's just because she went to school all, all Lent, she thinks she's Mrs. Know it all. She thinks she's the teacher instead of one of the women being the teacher. She just thinks she's all it just because she has brains. We all have brains at the end of the day. We just, we just don't know much, as much as Bridget do. She don't really hang around me. I don't really like her. She don't really like me. Did I talk to you all day? No, I didn't. Yesterday you was like it as well. Yeah, because you nearly tripped me up yesterday. That's why. I, I don't even want to talk to you. We should all take Bridget with us. I'm so with you, baby girl. Hands up. Hands up if you want to take Bridget with us. I'm only joking. Bridget knows when he's joking. She Curse knows she loves me. But I just don't care. Wait. Right. It's the end of the day, and the girls depart for home in their taxis. Victoria! Get in! Bringing calm to the factory. But half an hour later, a phone call from Bridget's mother triggers a crisis. Elmer, what's your mom? Okay. Thank you. Hello? Hi, babe. Yeah, it's a problem. OK. I want to start the bed. Oh, right, OK. I will definitely sort it tomorrow. We can't have that. You know, next thing it'll be scissors or whatever. So, no, we stop everything as it starts. OK, thanks for letting me know anyway. Anything yeah. like that, just let me know. What's happened? Bridges. No little bridges yeah. who's out there. Tonight, apparently, they were sticking pins in her ear. Shannon and Margaret sticking pins in her. Mm, like that. <laughs> That's what you should give her. I, mean, I don't mean a strike on the board, I mean a strike like that. <laughs> Stupid cow. To try and find out exactly what happened, Thelma checks the CCTV cameras. There's Margaret there, yeah? Yeah. There's Bridget there. Yeah. Is she just going to... Can we go back a little? Did she just go over to her then? What did she do then? She's got something in her hand there, hasn't she? Um, um, Shannon, she's Shannon. gone over to Bridges. And they're all watching. Yeah, she's just stuck that pen in it. You little bitch. I feel really sick. I feel like smacking her, do you know? I can't believe what I'm watching here. Because this is pure evil, what they're doing. So what she got to do next to get him to stab her with scissors? No. She's going to have to go. She's going to have to go. Can't have that. After a few teething problems, it is a week and a half into Thelma's dressmaking course. But now an allegation of bullying from Bridget, one of the group's English travellers, means Thelma must deal with her first serious crisis. You know, you know watching that there, um, it just brings back to me when my Tracy was a little girl and she went to school. She came home and she told me that this particular girl in school 
was sticking a compass in her leg. So I went round to the house where the kid lived. Because if someone come and told me that my child was doing it, I would really knock her head off for doing it. I would, oh God, I would take everything away and I would kill her for doing for being a bully. I'm in debt for this, do you know what I mean? I've put my whole family life on the line to do this and you get, <laughs> you're getting episodes like that. You're getting schoolgirl behaviour. And then that, to me, is just unbelievable what's gone on there. Bridget looked really subdued this morning. And you could see, you know, you can see the effect on her shoulders while her head's down all the time. You can just see the effect it's having on her. You know, a lot of travellers, they talk about being bullied from when they're kids and they're doing the bullying. So it's horrible, horrible to see. Well, when I'm looking on there, it looks like Margaret and Shannon. I think it was Shannon's come over and just um, uh, pricked you with it. So how many times would you say that she stabbed you then with the pin? Let's, let's go from four there. four or five. OK. And then they've said something that I'm not even going to repeat. No. Well, because just tell me in. Things. I don't want to say it on the camera. OK, can, can we just not have a say? She doesn't want to say it on the camera. One and a half. What I'm going to talk to you about now is really serious, OK? Why did Shannon leave your group and go over and stick a pin in Bridget? Cos that's what we're all doing, poking each To each other? Yeah. Bridget didn't stick a pin in anyone. Yeah, but we're all doing it to each other. Do you not think that's bullying, doing that to a kid who's standing on her own? No, because we're only joking. No, Bridget. if somebody's not involved in the joke, it's not a joke. Yeah, but did I do it to Bridget? I never said that. I'm asking you what you said to Shannon to make her go over and stick I didn't say pin. nothing to Shannon. You didn't say nothing? I okay. don't know if I did or not, but I'm sure I never. You never said nothing to Shannon. Believe me, someone's getting sacked today. Yes. Someone's going. Shannon said something rude to her, yeah? What did she say? Right, if, I can't, if you don't stick in the air, I'm going to stick it up your hole. That's what she said. She was going to dab us with a laugh. Yeah. No, that's not a laugh, that's Margaret. That's how we are. Do you think laugh. that's funny? Yeah. Well, that's not funny. You can't see that as bullying? No. You really can't see that as bullying? Not one thing, no. Honestly, it's intimidating, believe me. Number one, you're on a strike. You're that close, that close to going, right? But I'm going to give you the strike because I think you're a better person than that. I think that you can turn yourself around and just get on with your way. Margaret is let off with a warning, but it's Shannon, the youngest in the group, who has been singled out as the main offender. When Bridget moved, I went over and stood outside this wall here. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Um, what happened then? We all walked over. Hmm. And what did you do? I didn't get her when she was over there. You did? You were doing that? Like that, yeah? I'm going to get you a taxi and you're going to go home. What I want you to do is think about that. Just put yourself in that situation and see how you'd feel. Mm. OK? So go and get your stuff out of your locker and go now. As the principal culprit, Shannon is sent home and suspended indefinitely. How do you feel about Bridget? Fucking need you. She's an ass. A child wouldn't go out and do something with she done. She's probably running crying. Can you tell me what happened yesterday afternoon? No, because if I start talking, then I'm going to get killed, so no. To be honest, I'm feeling sick of it because you can't have a laugh. If you have a laugh, you get shot at it. So really, stupid. Do you think you'll stick it out? No, don't think I'll stick it. No, it's too strict for me. Our home is not as strict as her. My mum and daddy's not as strict to me as she is. I won't stick it. I won't stick it for six weeks, never mind six months.
I'll see you later. Shannon lives 40 miles away in Wrexham with her aunt Kathleen, who is also on the course. Mom? Thelma has known the family since Shannon was a baby. They were the first travellers to ask her to put diamonds on a dress. <laughs> but the day's events now need to be explained to her mother. Who started sticking the pins in one there? Who started it off? Victoria got her. Victoria for 100% fat. How old is she? How, how old is she? Um, she's 18. She's 18. And, and so she would you class bullying. that as bullying? I think that's just stupid. And to be honest, the other girl is a bigger girl than an older girl. Is only obviously not going to be afraid of Shannon, is she? But personally, myself, I don't, I don't see any hammers. Do you think that people should stick pins in each other? No, I don't think they should stick pins in each other. But if they do, it's a laugh. It's a laugh, isn't it? Shannon is left at home to ponder her future. While in the factory, Thelma's staff continue to work on the dress for Zoe's party, which is now less than a week away. All of Thelma's new trainees have been invited to the event. For many, the first non-traveller party they will ever attend. And although they don't yet have the skill required to make their own outfits, Thelma has given out corsets for them to decorate. I'm going to smother that in diamonds, then put the diamonds around there where they were already. And then down there. Mummy, Daddy, I can't breathe, Phil. What's up with But despite Shannon's suspension, there is still some confusion amongst the travellers as to what constitutes appropriate behaviour in the workplace. And Shannon got a spender, was it a sack of spender? Spended. A spended. Well, they shouldn't have spended, they should have just given her a warning, sorry, a warning or a strike. And then she had a warning, like, next time, she's done it against you, getting sacked. But if you were in any other workplace and somebody done that, they'd be sacked on the spot now that you'd have no second warning. And obviously Bridgie felt upset by it. Do you know what I mean? So and I wouldn't like it if someone kept coming up to me pinning me, do you know what I mean? That just hurt me. Right then. So you didn't like that? Huh? So maybe Bridgie didn't like get keep getting pinned. No, because she'd... if I if someone pinned me and I didn't like it, I'd stick the pin into the right. But then she gets sacked, this is the problem. Well, as long as I get my own back, I don't care. <gasps> so if someone you if can't no, do that in a workplace. If you pin me, right, and it really did hurt right, me. Right, if I got that, right, if you got that and pin me, yeah? No, no, if you got that, right, and you pin me right then, it really did hurt, yeah. and I knew that you was going to get in trouble for it, yeah. or the pinning me, I wouldn't care if I got sacked, dragged out from the head to toe out, I'd have to get that pin and I'd have to stick it to you. Right, OK, right. That's the way I roll. So she... Shannon has now been suspended for four days. And Thelma is making the journey to Wrexham, hoping to resolve her first big crisis once and for all. I'm 50-50, I'm sitting right in the middle. I don't know whether she should go or whether we should let her come back and give her a chance. Maybe she has gone too far this time. I'd need to see some remorse from her. You know, I'd need to see as she learned her lesson. I think we've just got to talk to her, talk to her mum and hopefully let us see the severity of what she's done. She come on. Um, she is really polite, but when she gets at Margaret, that's it. When she's at home, I have held Chan once. That's it. She's one of the best children I have. Out of yeah. The whole six, she's one of the best. Hello, Shannon. Hi, So what have you been doing? Nothing. Have you thought about what you've done? Yeah. yeah. Are you sorry for what you've done? Yeah. Definitely sorry for what you've done. Yeah. All right, so I accept your apology, but you come back, Rice, and you've definitely you've got a strike against you, yeah. Rice. So you've got to keep your nose clean now. So you look like an angel. You've got to act like an angel. Oh, uh, thank you. Okay. All right. Thanks you. very much, then. You're welcome. To all love. To all girls. To all. To all love. Might be your turn next, mightn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Ta-da, sweetie. Ta-da. When I speak to the families that, as I always say, help put me where I am today, it's like you think, yeah, you know, this is why I'm doing it. They don't get a chance. They get a chance from nowhere. And that's why I am doing it for these kids. And if I give up at the first hurdle and say, oh, she's better out of the way, then everyone else will behave, then, you know, I'm not doing what I set out to do. I am really glad I film was taking Shannon back on. I was hoping she would, but I didn't really know, yes or no. But I really am over the moon that she's taking her back on. She is a beautiful woman. You have known Felma for years. I've known Felma since Kathleen was a baby. 
It's very good what Fatima done. She is putting like herself on risk and she wouldn't know, be knowing you're a person like that would take that chance. You wouldn't take that risk like Fatima done. <coughs> It's now just a few days until Zoe's party. Thelma's staff have been putting the final touches on her outfit. Just be good. As if, just be careful. And the travellers are busy decorating their own corsets. Where is that one, Van? No. Because I couldn't fit a diamond in that one. Did you get a little smally one? Thought you wanted big ones. Boing, 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 boing. But having missed four days, Shannon's outfit is behind schedule. Tonight, she's attempting to catch up, helped by two of her fellow trainees, Margaret and her 17-year-old aunt, Kathleen. Kathy, can you see my ash crack when I bend like that? No. Because no. it keeps popping out of these jeans. I mean, <laughs> Zoe's birthday will be the first non-traveller party the girls have ever attended. Say, be good. But born. Boring because there's no travellers. You won't be able to see no travellers or nothing there, no. What will it be like with the country boys? Can I talk to them? Why not? Because obviously they're not travellers, they're country people. Mm. And you'll sketch yourself a bad name. Your name, like, will be took from you. Good night, Paddy. Paddy from Liverpool. That's me. Turn the camera to him. He's a big puff and he loves boys. <laughs> Stop, Billy. Billy, what do you keep grabbing for? Like, what's happening, Billy? Get up, young woman. No. Oh, Billy, grab her. No, no, no. Oh, Lord, I, I can't do it. I really can't control her. Everyone around me. Yeah. Are you with you? I'm not fucking going with you! You hunty-cut bastard. You're not my girlfriend. You said to fuck someone. I'm not going with you. Stop grabbing you, will you? I'm not going with you. Nice leg. You have a fine lady leg. It's the night of Zoe's Moulin Rouge themed party. With Shannon now back on the course, all the girls are getting ready at the factory. I'm actually glad that Shannon's back because it wasn't the same not having her here and I didn't think she gets suspended and she understands like what's going on and everything and we're all alright again. So every part of it's got to be bling bling. Blingage. Each girl has designed their own corset. And after weeks of work, Zoe's dress is also ready, with elements of every girl's ideas being incorporated into the final design. Roseanne, your part of the corset is this bit, the see-through bit, what you designed, yeah? The flames are from... Bridget, where's Bridget? So Bridget's idea there. The back of it is off Margaret's. The shape of the back is off you that we've done from there, OK? So when she puts this on and she reels herself, all them pieces is all what you've put on it, OK? I think you should give yourself a big clap, because that is brilliant. Go on, clap yourself. <laughs> the girls, like, looking at the dress they've just made, couldn't give a shit, basically. All they were interested in was what they'd made for themselves, which is typical teenager. They looked at it, oh, yeah, it's lovely, it's lovely, but look what I've done for me. So what you'd expect from a load of teenagers is the more interesting what they've done for themselves. For many of the girls, this will be the first time they have socialised outside their own community. And Bridget's mother has voiced concerns about exposing her daughter to the ways of non-travellers. We'll look after her. OK, babe. All right. OK, bye-bye. One of the mums wants a chaperone for her daughter. Even though she's with us and all the other girls, she's still never been out without a chaperone. So here, I think it's her aunt who's coming to chaperone us to the party. She's a bit worried, obviously, about what she's heard, what happens in country people's party. Like, we hear things about travellers. They get stereotyped all the time by people in our culture. But we forget the other side of it as well, that, you know, obviously, travellers stereotype us as well. In addition to bringing along a chaperone, 17-year-old Bridget has opted not to wear the tutu skirt provided by Thelma. Yeah, that's the skirt that I'm wearing tonight, it's uh, the tutu, because it comes a lot longer than where the tutu came to, because the tutu come back there, and I think that's a bit indecent for the skirt to be that short. How can your skirt so long, Bridget? Because 
It was either this or the tweeter where you can see the locks. Bridget, you're missing the button. Everyone's saying top Her, of the Give me a Bridget, look. My God. No, not your God. Yesterday, I said to Bridget, you know, here's some... Go and put some diamonds on your, on your top, love. It's diamonds there, and she went, no, we don't do that. Right, and now she's just said to um, Roseanne, Roseanne said, how come you skate so long? And she went, because I don't want, I don't have rub me arse like all these. I'm not like these, she said. She's not doing herself any favours at all, that kid, is she? I'm feeling ugly, I'm fat, and you're feeling me, I'm gonna knock you out. Come on, you still eat yourself? No. This is my outfit. Which one's best that we could make? I made. Yeah. I will. <sighs> Stress. Zoe's Moulin Rouge party is being held in a club in the heart of Liverpool. Her gypsy designed dress has met with approval. I really like to actually be in this. This sparkly, this blingy, and this is how they dress all the time, really. <laughs> and for Thelma, the party has done much to heal the rift between her staff and the travellers. have got to remember this is like a new venture for my staff as well. So, you know, there's been a lot of conflict over the few weeks, and it's been where, you know, people getting upset with them and they're getting in my hair, they're getting in my way. But I'd say this party has definitely brought them all together. I really felt so proud and I, f I felt love for them. I really do love each and every one of them. I really did look at them and, and I really felt proud of them and I loved them. It's my first time at a country girls party and the mummy's life is rocking. God, is very good. Ship music, they're all drinking, all the women around here. Going on very stupid, acting very stupid. The Johnny's have very good actually, having a very good time with all the girls. I'm going for this song. Can we, can we please, 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 just one dance. Don't get me feet in. No, we're not feeling the feet, just oh, the, just. Right. Don't get me feet in. Despite the good mood, Bridget has opted to leave early. I don't really know what happened with Bridget. Her mum came and her auntie. They seen like the country people outside and said, you know, she was frightened of the country people and she got off. But all she's doing is making a wider gap between her and the other girls. That's all she's doing. Everyone could have been a scared of us, like saying, oh, they're the jippos, don't grind them, oh, they're this and that. Bridget never really mixed the match with them, so that's her own fault. She would have had a good time if she would have come. She really put all her effort into her clothes and things for nothing. I promised to myself that I would make seamstresses out of these girls in six months. Whether I can do it or not, I don't know. I really do not know because it's proven to be harder than what I ever, I ever dreamt of. This is not fitting in with my dream at all. Shannon, want to be ashamed of yourselves? Disgusting. Some guys just pulled his trousers down in front of the girls, so I've got to get these off before it's all going to kick off. I need to get them home now. Thelma's project will now move into its second month. Oh, God, so seriously, Kathleen, I'm on my nose, I don't find you funny. And an academic tutor begins to work with the girls. These are uppercase letters, like capital letters. Do you know what I mean by that? OK. She's the equivalent of a reception child. But as the argument between Bridget and Margaret rumbles on, and the strain of working with the traveller trainees begins to take its toll... If I could turn the, you know, the clock back now, I wouldn't do it. Thelma's absence sparks a meltdown in the factory. It's just wrong, totally wrong. No, she came up to my face for my mother's life. When I get you back to the site, you're dead. You've got too much to say, but I've got too much to say. Don't shout. I'm gonna get the handicap camera away from me. I'm sorry, but people like that just don't even deserve a chance in here. I'm going. 